the normals of the penis. So talking about the problems of the penile cancers, I'd like to say that we have already mentioned quite a lot of things. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm just concluding this discussion or this part of our discussion. What I would like to say first and foremost, being uh, a person who is involved in the early diagnostics uh, among the female population, uh, the, as a matter of fact, we asked ourselves whether women should be vaccinated, whether it's of any reason. In a certain time, there appeared certain reports and studies that show that vaccination is absolutely necessary. The countries that provided such vaccine, uh, covering over 70 percent of population, it uh, gave tangible effects. These are uh, reports from Australia, from Canada, from our neighbors, from uh, Finland. And of course, in such situation, I suppose we should follow their steps and we shall sooner or later come to vaccination and uh, good coverage for men. And also, if we speak about the conditions uh, of um, screening, it is virtually absent, neither for the anal, anal canal, neither for the oral um, tumors. So as a matter of fact, people come over for diagnostics with already advanced cancer. At the same time, if we speak about the head and neck tumors, this is the biggest population uh, of suiciders. The problem is really serious. One for 100,000 of population in the European um, register in Brazil, for example, it's higher than prostate cancers because it's uh, hereditary factors in Brazil. So in, in Uganda, in Colombia, as a matter of fact, it's quite a big problem for the mankind. It's uh, rele relevantly small for Europe, for the European um, just continent, but in some countries it's big enough. And why is this problem relevant in our statistical uh, directory? Uh, this problem is not included at all. No, it is not included on cancers of, pen, of the penis. I, I, I haven't found it. Me neither. Good. So it's a problem as well because, as a matter of fact, when we started dealing with the renal cancers, the renal cancers were not included there as well. So the problem is quite evident. If many significant diseases from the viewpoint of five-year survival shows better results from every decade, then the penile cancers show poorer and poorer uh, situation. So this is the situation up to 2013, but the situation has not uh, improved since then. Etiology and geographical peculiarities, uh, a lot has been already said about it. This is the map of the world. You can see Africa, Oriental countries. Circumcision is a standard method there. And you can see that in the majority of cases, uh, where this is a sort of a religious procedure. It is performed either at birth or up to the age of seven. If I'm not mistaken, at the age of seven, all the boys are, have already undergone circum circumcision. In Brazil and Chile and all these countries of South um, Americas, they actually show statistics of circumcision below 30% in Uganda from 20 to, to 80 percent. But the idea is that this is one of the countries in Africa where this method actually is um, uh, much rarer uh, performed than in, uh, compared to other African countries. Now, if you uh, look at the risks of uh, so comparing circumcision and uh, the reduction of uh, HPV um, development, so circumcision should be done at a relatively young age. If we speak about its necessity, of course, and of course there is an alternative, and I will talk about it in uh, my talk a bit later. If we speak about the positive aspects of circumcision, then the rarest disease uh, or penile cancer is a rare disease among those who underwent circumcision. But if we speak about circumcision among those who, who performed it 
over the age of 18, there, are, uh, there is data that the risk of penile cancer is increased, not decreased. Most probably it was uh, related to the fact that circumcision was done for medical reasons and there were already some conditions of chronic inflammation and pre-tumorous conditions as well. If you look at circumcision as a method of uh, penile cancer prevention, then of course it must be performed, uh, especially, especially in the regions where uh, there is minimal uh, hygiene uh, sort of set up. Why do we speak about hygiene? For example, in Denmark, where the level of circumcision at that time, it was uh, 1995, by the way, uh, was 1.6 percent at the moment. It's more, of course, but nonetheless. And uh, with appropriate hygiene procedures of the genitals and groin, uh, the reduction of uh, penile cancers uh, were they achieved reduction in penile cancers uh, from 1.15 to uh, 0.82 percent. So correct hygiene of the groin skin is definitely uh, a must. And uh, very frequently, penile cancers, they are relevant to the de-socialized or marginal, so to say, groups of population. I'm not speaking about smoking, because I suppose smoking is an inc increased risk of everything, of every condition. And what we are here for is uh, HPV. Uh, among them, penile cancers happen six times as more frequently. The majority of patients with the uh, penile cancers are just carriers of uh, HPV type uh, 16 and 18. Why do we speak about it? We speak about it because it happens, it starts at the age of uh, 15 after the sexual debut in 5.6% uh, of girls and almost 20% uh, of boys. In almost all the ages, this particular indicator of HPV carriage of both oncogenic and non-oncogenic types accounts for 70 percent. If you look at men only, then this particular data, prevalence of HPV, you can see is much higher than in women. And this is the problem that is really topical and it's a burning issue both in men and in women. So why is it so uh, such a burning issue because many diseases which are precancerous, which are papillomas, which are cancerous uh, malformations, they are they occur in the majority of cases in HPV carriers and if you take into account the fact that it's actually an external localization, we have huge psychological factors that add up. If you look at the distribution of patients with HPV and associated disease, and those who are not carriers of HPV, you can see that 65 uh, percent, in 65 percent uh, of cases, penile cancers are associated with HPV carriage of type 16 and 18, and in men, uh, 16 type is associated with the majority of cancers. It's not uh, just 16 and 18; it's 16 in men, which is most dangerous and. Uh, vaccination of this uh, uh, nine-valent vaccine is brilliant, but actually even quadri, uh, qu uh, um, quadrivalent vaccine can be used, in fact, because it's quite all right for type 16. Why should we be taking this into account? Because if you, you take over 10 sexual partners, and this is something that is uh, quite a common case nowadays, then diseases, apart from usual uh, sexually transmitted ones, um, well, uh, should be taken into account, and HPV carriage is among them. So, <clears throat> what is the difference of male immunity from the female immunity? Unfortunately, we don't have the natural antibodies to the HPV, especially to 16 and especially to 18. There is different data from 2014, for example, and 2018. that the antibodies in men to type 16 and 18, according to the very fresh data, occur only in 5 to 10 percent. 
and in women it is different. So what's the option? Taking into account that today we don't have any screening programs, not only in Russian Federation, but actually all over the world, there is no screening for the penile cancers and head and neck cancers. Vaccination is utterly important. And I suppose that vaccination should be done under the programs which are already present in the developed countries. I mean boys and girls, adolescent ones, especially boys, but also men up to the age of 45. Why? Because once again, I would like to say that antibodies to HPV are not in their body system, naturally speaking, and men actually are more frequently carriers of HPV, it's a fact. So uh, when do we start vaccination? Um, I mu must apologize for this, uh, for the quality of the slide, but um, Disregarding the age when the man gets vaccination, there is a reduction of diseases related to HPV. If you look at the general summary, then I should say that HPV in males is as topical, as burning as uh, in men, as women, in women, excuse me. Unlike women, we don't have any screening programs of the tumors associated with HPV. We have worse immunity to HPV, and we are in a much higher risk group, in a risk group of um, just um, penile cancer development and other localizations of cancer can also uh, develop much more frequently in males with HPV. How should it all be done? Via parents who should explain it to their children, the necessity of prevention, as well as the use of uh, barrier contraception and uh, vaccination, of course. Why this problem of vaccination or just vaccination can resolve many uh, problems. For example, if you detect penile cancer in a man, then up to 50% they postpone their treatment one year and more because they have uh, uh, all uh, just negative emotions and it actually results in self-treatment um, worsening their prognosis. As a result, instead of uh, having their life and actually their uh, penis, sparing their penis, they unfortunately uh,